it does take us to our talk of the tape, the rising rate reality and whether we're getting close to the end of the recent move. You've got to think we need to be of stocks and get anything going from here. Let's ask our panel. Dan Greenhouse is Solus Alternative Asset Management's chief strategist. SoFi's head of investment strategy, Liz Young, with us as well. And so is CNBC contributor Greg Branch of the Veritas Financial Group. Everybody's at Post 9, so we got a big desk because we got a big story that we're trying to figure out. Greg Branch, yes, um, is this your moment? Is your call that stocks are going to have a really rough go in the process of taking place? I think it's starting to take place, Scott. And uh, I think, as you know, I see another 10 percent downside from here uh, at this juncture. Uh, we still haven't seen many of the catalysts happen for my thesis to play out. And that is that consensus estimates are just too high. I am higher and longer than consensus. And that means that I see no path to an 8 percent fourth quarter, now an 8.3 percent fourth quarter, which means that I see no path to a 12.2 percent growth rate on earnings in 2024. All right. Liz Young, is Greg too negative? Because, I mean, he's been negative for a while. Market's gotten away from him a little bit. He hasn't really wavered at all. And now he's sort of feeling like this maybe is his moment. I mean, I respect an opinion that if, if you feel wrong and you stick to it, I've been cautious all year. I, obviously, we're getting a little reprieve today, but I think it's just that. It's a brief reprieve. Pretty big down day yesterday, scary across sectors, scary across rates. And this idea of a 5% tenure now is not that far off. And then you start to worry about what does a 6% tenure look like? And, you know, one of the things that I've been thinking about a lot today and, and will be thinking about for the rest of the week is the re-steepening of the yield curve. And I've said this over and over again. It's not the inversion that's the problem. It's the re-steepening. And we have re-steepened by a lot of basis points. Now, I think at 31 basis points as we're mm -hmm. shooting this, mm -hmm. that's what the problem usually is. Okay, so you're on Team Gunlock uh, because he I, tweets. I he tweets. I am. Uh, deep inverting very rapidly. Should put everyone on recession warning, not just recession watch. If the unemployment rate ticks up just a couple of tenths, it will be a recession alert. Buckle up. Is that what we should be worried about now? So I'm going to take issue with this. Uh, I take issue with a lot of what was just said, but Good, we'll, we'll, fo go. we'll focus on this for a second let's here. Let's go. The yield curve inverting. Uh, Liz is exactly right, and everyone who's made this point is exactly right. It's not the inversion. The inversion is the starting of the, of the clock, so to speak. It's the uninversion, the re-steepening, if you will, that, that it indicates you're close to a recession. But we have to ask ourselves why. And historically, the answer is because the two-year rates in general are coming down, but in particular, the two-year is coming down because the market is starting to price in or realize rate cuts. That's not what's happening today. The curve is getting closer to zero because the 10-year is moving higher. And I'm not sure we should take historical analogies, which are not perfect parallels, and apply them to today and reach a similar conclusion. Okay. I don't think that's fair. What do you think? Today, actually, that is exactly what's happening. So today is different than yesterday. Today, the two-year did come down further than the 10-year came down. So there was a re-steepening that accelerated for One that day. reason. Right. And it's because of the weak jobs report, right? So it's all based on the Fed is going to cut sooner. I take your point, though, completely. The re-steepening that happened earlier this year during the regional bank stuff was the troublesome re-steepening, where the two-year came down pretty rapidly. Right. This re-steepening has been because of upside surprises to economic data. My take is, is more so that the upside surprises to economic data won't last, especially at these rate levels. And if you get to a point where the long-term average spread between twos and tens is a positive 88 basis points, if the two-year stays where it is, that suggests a 10-year of about 6%. And I don't see that as sustainable and something that we can get to without pain. Well.